NC State just won five games in five nights to win the ACC tournament in men's basketball. And it's absolutely insane. I'm a huge NC State fan. I went there, graduated there, been a fan my whole life. So we're going to take a few minutes to talk about all this because there's a lot that just happened. And I just want to spend this time to kind of appreciate the craziness that has happened every single day for the last five days. So before the tournament, we were not a tournament team. We needed to win this tournament to make it into the NCAA. And we did just that. We won five games in Washington, D.C. And I think the craziest stat is that we won more games this week than the Wizards have this entire season. But how the heck did we do this? On the first night, we played Louisville. Louisville is not a good team. They are 8-24. and I haven't done anything this season. It's kind of sad. But we kept it kind of close. It probably should have been a blowout, but it wasn't. Our best player was out, DJ Horn. He's our leading scorer. He was third team all ACC. Uh, he was out with a hip injury, um, but other players stepped up. Casey Morsell had 25 points, um, and we were able to get the job done, scoring 94 points. So that was pretty good. You know, not anything too crazy. Just guys doing their thing. Yeah, just nice little dunk. Good quality basketball. And, you know, stay alive for another day. In the grand scheme of things, I didn't even watch this game. I thought that this would be a game that we would forget. I thought that would just be, you know, a nice little cherry on top to a mediocre season and lose the next game to Syracuse. You know, during this Louisville game, Jim Beheim, a former coach at Syracuse, he, uh, he had some choice words to say about NC State. Kind of unprompted. We don't really have any beef with Syracuse. But he, he went on to say this. I don't know why anybody that's got the recent history of these guys is celebrating. <laughs> right, just oh out of Anything, pocket. Except, right? I guess, being here. I mean, that's it. That's all I can see. And guess who we play next? His team, Syracuse. And this is the only game that is a blowout, and we just absolutely destroy Syracuse. It is all NC State all day. They keep it close the first half, and then second half, we're just – destroying them it's like not even like we're not even trying we didn't even score at the end we could have had 90 points if we wanted to just boom dj horn bucket rebound kick out bucket easy dub round two right so we're smooth sailing uh the thing is though that syracuse they're not all that great they were the seven seed i believe they're an okay team it's a quality win but the next matchup is when things get kind of scary i didn't watch these first two games so I was like, I don't really care. If we win, then great. If we don't, then I'm not surprised. Now, this next game was against Duke. And Duke is a scary team. They are always good. But, you know, we tend to upset them a lot. So I was a little bit cautious. I was like, you know, I'll watch this game because if we win, then it's going to be amazing. If we lose, it's whatever. Right? And Muhammad Diara just absolutely balled out this game. Right? Watch this dunk. Watch this dunk. He goes, ooh, fake. Boom. Slammed it in. And this guy, he's not typically our starter. He's like our sixth or seventh man even. Um, and he's just really stepped up in these last few weeks of the season. Big man can shoot. And he's also uh, he's also practicing uh, Ramadan. So he's fasting right now and playing basketball every single day. And he's still balling out. He ended up with 14 points, 16 rebounds, four blocks, and three steals. Like, he was carrying our team. It, it just goes like this every game. It, it's, been, it's been someone different every game. And so we beat Duke. We're feeling high. At this point, I'm like, I don't know if we fire our coach anymore. That was kind of the thought going into this tournament. Like, okay, we're going to have a couple games and then probably fire a coach at the end of it. And now it's like, oh, you know, this is a quality win. Maybe we keep him another year. Who knows? But right now it's still kind of in the gray area. And then we play UVA. Every time we play UVA, it's always an interesting game. UVA plays very slow, very methodical. Final score is always like 62 to 58, something like that. Uh, they keep the pace really, really slow. NC State is the complete opposite of that. We force turnovers. We create chaos. We try to get points in transition. That's our strategy. 
And so it's completely opposite strategies. Every time we play UVA, it's a chess match of figuring out who can control the pace, who can control the pace. And it's typically a pretty close game. And UVA is probably a little bit better coached, a little bit better disciplined, but we've had their number recently. Um, so it's always a good game to watch. And this game was no exception. I mean, just look at this scoring chart. It was dead close the entire game. UVA jumped out to a little bit of a lead here. And then let's talk about this last couple minutes because they were up by six with 52 seconds left. That's a two score game. How the heck did we win this game? Let's just watch this whole thing. I'm just gonna give a live commentary on it. So we just fouled them. UVA is shooting free throws. Go one for two, so now it's a six point game. Missed the second one. Now we gotta get a shot off. It doesn't have to be a three, but you probably want it to be a three. And then you get fouled. That's like the perfect thing. You're getting points without the clock coming off, but we need to make all three. This is a huge opportunity. What does Casey Morsell do but just sink them? Number one, down. Number two, money. Number three, buckets. Now we got a chance, 43 seconds left, right? Three point game. Open three, misses it. UVA is a good three point shooting team. They miss an open three, get the timeout. We got one possession left. We're alive, right? You just gotta draw up something good. And I don't think that we really execute it very well because it's just a cluster mess, triple teamed. Marcel's gotta get something off, tries to draw the foul again, but doesn't. Quick foul, the game's pretty much over. You know, it's three point game. This is their best free throw shooting player. He shoots 87% and he misses. The front end. Like, how is that even how's that even a thing? And then desperation shot banks it in. Like what <laughs> what? It's like, okay, it's going into overtime, but with a play like that, you know who's gonna win, right? You don't even have to question it. O'Connell steps up this game. And they're hacking at DJ Burns all game and they're finally calling the fouls and he gets the and one. That's what he does. Dishes it out. DR is having a panic attack. Wide open layup. And then that's the ball game. We beat UVA, the number three seed in the ACC, in the semifinals. So we've beaten the two seed. We've beaten the three seed. Now we have our biggest challenge yet. It's our biggest rival. It's the best team in the ACC. They have the ACC player of the year. It's UNC. But we're locked in, baby. We're locked in. We are ready for this matchup. They want it, we need it. You can just you can just tell. You can just tell they don't really care as much. And the first 10 minutes of this game went absolutely nuts. They are at top of the key three. Where's this coming from? He hasn't been like this all season. Ramadan Diara is a different breed. And we're just controlling the pace of this game. We're not letting up at all. RJ Davis is getting shut down. So we control the first quarter of this game pretty well. RJ Davis starts to heat up though. You gotta expect it. They bring it close. We're playing pretty close again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like at the half, this happens right here. This is just a nice play by UNC. And that, that scared me. Getting a buzzer beater at the half, that can sometimes take the wind out of your sails going into the second half, but we were resilient, laid the hammer down. DJ Burns, Armando Baycott, you're too little, you're too little, but it's still a close game. UNC is still playing well. RJ Davis is a really good player, and I hate to say it because I'm not a fan of him, just because he goes to UNC, but he's really good. I respect his game. I respect Armando's game, but the rest of UNC just couldn't keep up. And even later in the game, it started to show that we had played four games before this. We're still playing like animals, right? Casey Morsell started cramping up with about seven minutes left. DJ Horn fouled out with two minutes left. DJ Burns just looked like someone needed to give him a cheeseburger. He was just, you know, he was sweating, man. Diara was, I don't know what, what was going on with him. He was like freaking out. It was starting to get in his head. He was getting nervous. Jaden Taylor. He rolled his ankle in the game against UVA, so he was playing limited time. By the end of the game, the five players on the court were pretty much the only five healthy players that we had left, besides walk-ons and guys that didn't get any playing time. 
So it was a little bit scary this last few minutes, but we were able to pull through ACC champions, put all our walk-ons in for the last 30 seconds of the game. It was magic. It was magic. And I'm still in shock. Obviously, Hillsborough Street in Raleigh right was crazy. Yeah. And everyone at NC State is on spring break, but there was still a massive crowd that showed up at the bell tower. Everyone was freaking out. It was amazing. I didn't go to bed until three in the morning. I've never seen a game like this. I've never felt an experience like this being an NC State fan my whole life. But you know, I'm sure a lot of y'all that are fans of, of the bigger schools and the, the bigger teams that win championships semi-regularly, you're like, what's so special about this? Teams win all the time. NC State wins a lot of championships in other sports, wrestling, women's basketball, that sort of stuff. What's so special about this? You know, it's it's a nice little underdog story, but grand scheme of things, why does this matter? Uh, I'll tell you why it matters. NC State is known for having a specific curse. Um, and so I'm just going to show you what it's called on Urban Dictionary. So this is what it is. An inevitable chain of events in sports where a blatant bad call or bizarre unlucky play causes in a total collapse of confidence, resulting in multiple unforced and devastating errors. This was posted in 2009. Now maybe you're thinking, this is recency bias. NC State wasn't good at basketball or football back then. They seem to be a lot better now, right? Wrong. That is very wrong. It has been since 1992 that NC State has won in basketball, football, or baseball in the ACC championship. NC State hasn't won an ACC championship in those three sports since that time. And it didn't stop in just 2009 when we were just straight up bad, you know? Even when we're good, it still happens. In 2021, our football team, we were pretty good. We finished the regular season 9-3. and three. We beat Clemson. We beat UNC in overtime. Or no, not in overtime, but in a, essentially a buzzer beater, crazy ending. Rushed the field both times. The greatest season of football that I had ever witnessed as a fan. And so we go into bowl season thinking, hey, we can get 10 wins. That's going to be pretty cool. We haven't done that since Philip Rivers was here, right? We got our bowl canceled for COVID rules. UCLA forfeited. And, you know, Dave Doran said, stands for no clue at all. All you got to say. And this happened just months after our baseball team. Same type of thing happens. We went to the College World Series and got disqualified because there were players that were exposed to COVID. And so you think, oh, well, if the players are exposed to COVID, then they probably canceled the whole event, right? No, they still had a jam-packed full stadium. Watch all the games. They just said, NC State, nope, you can't do it. It even happened in women's basketball too. We had a historic year, number one seed. We're going into the Elite Eight, feeling pretty good. Only problem is the Elite Eight is held in Bridgeport, Connecticut. You know what else is in Bridgeport, Connecticut? UConn. It was essentially a home game for UConn. That little corner right there, that's all the NC State fans there are in the entire arena, right? This whole arena, all blue. It's a home game for UConn, and they win in double overtime. You play that any other location, NC State wins that game. And, you know, of course, it extends beyond just when we're good and we just have unlucky breaks. Everybody that went to NC State remembers this game chance to beat number three Clemson shank the field goal and so that's been the life of an NC State fan for the past 30 years but we finally broke it we finally did it we're finally ACC champions the curse is lifted cardiac pack is back it's amazing and the parallels that this has to the 1983 season are nuts let me just run through very quickly what happened in 1983. If you haven't seen Survive in Advance, the 30 for 30 film, go and watch that now. But essentially what happened in 1983, we were a pretty decent team. Had a good amount of struggles in the middle of the season though. Lost a lot of games. Kind of took ourselves out of contention for the NCAA for an at-large bid. So we needed to win the ACC. We needed to win that conference tournament to make it to the NCAA. And so we just did just that. All three games, close games, beat Wake Forest, Played the semifinals in overtime. Played the semifinals in overtime this year. Had to beat the number one overall seed in the finals and beat the 
ACC player of the year. It was Ralph Sampson back then. It was RJ Davis this year. So literally a one for one with what happened in 1983. And then, you know, we went on to win the NCAA tournament. Close game after close game after close game. And it was the same type of thing that happened this year where every game there was a different player that stepped up. My parents were telling me about it. It was one game, it would be Derek Wittenberg. The next game, it would be Sidney Lowe. This game, it was Thurl Bailey having to guard one of the greatest ACC players of all time, Ralph Sampson. Money, draining threes, like Mo Diara. Crazy. Crazy. And then probably the most iconic moment in sports is this play right here. And it all started with the ACC tournament. So I'm going to just play it out. In there now as Gannon's in there with Wittenberg and Lowe. Down to 25 seconds. Dangerous pass. This is a really interesting strategy by Houston. They're aggressive now. Not staying back. Well, remember they have a team in there for, to block anything that goes inside. Down to 14 seconds. Oh, almost stolen by Drexler. They, Boy, is he good at they've that. They've got to drive to the basket. It's down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg. Oh, that's a long way. So, with all that being said, I know who I'm putting in my bracket. I know who's winning this. I hope you do too. Stay safe out there. One time. Thank you and God bless you, everybody.